Remember we said there's four key learning areas. Laws, positioning, and now the next one. Next one's player management. A topic that's talked about a lot by referees and referee instructors, but very, very seldom ever coached. Um, it's actually got some principles behind it. And then there's a whole pile of techniques. We're not gonna go through all the techniques, but we'll talk about very quickly about the principles involved and what you should be looking for when you're coaching a referee. Have they got the basic principles intact? Um, we're also going to consider just then some of the techniques that they need. <clears throat> okay, first one, and this is, the, this is the critical area. This is the critical area. Communication, communication. We've spent generations with referees saying, don't talk to them, don't get yourself involved in a debate or an argument with the players, be quiet. Just get on with the game. And we've actually made our lives harder. We've said things like, let the whistle do your talking for you. And all that's done is made our lives harder. Try and get your kids around the house to pick up that toy, to move that across to there by going, what we try to do, going <laughs> How much simpler is it to put a smile on your face and say, no, 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 no. I want the ball over there. I want the ball over there. And when you get the ball over there, remember good manners says, even though you're the leader, to put your hand up, smile and say, thank you. It's as simple as that. Tell the players what you want and tell them what the outcome will be if they don't do it. It's not a threat. It's not a threat. We'll talk a little bit later about how to use a yellow card more effectively and how to use the warnings in the roadblock system a bit more effectively. But essentially, players must be left in no doubt about what the consequences of their behaviour are. You have to do that if you want to get your message across. You can't get your message across without communicating and you cannot do that without opening your mouth. The whistle will not do it. The whistle is just a way of saying, whoops, something's gone wrong, we're stopping here for a moment. That's all the whistle's about, nothing else. Next thing we have to do in player management is we try to build what's called chains of agreement. What's a chain of agreement? Well, effectively, a chain of agreement, the philosophy behind it is that every time the referee's authority is unchallenged, every time the referee's authority is accepted by the players, it's a little link in a chain that develops control. At the start of the game, the referee says, whoa, whoa, hold on, don't kick off yet. Can you just move back into your own half? Hey, just back, yeah, one step will do. Thank you. That's the first link in the chain of agreement. What happens if the referee builds a long, strong chain of agreement? Is that the decisions, the actions of the referee are less often challenged. It also means that as the game pressures build up later in the match, if there's a huge decision that has to be made, the explosion, the problems that occur in the match are minimised. They're not eliminated but they are minimised because the referee has already built this chain of agreement. The people, the players, the spectators, and in fact, even the coaches are used to accepting the referee's decisions. And this and this are linked in with that magic word called respect. Called respect. If you don't have respect, you can't referee. Sure, of course, that's, that's a bit of a misstatement. You don't have to have respect to referee, but you cannot referee effectively. It's easy to referee games where there's no pressure on. But in pressure games, your reputation, 
and your respect is critical to your ability to actually maintain control of the game. If you're prepared to allow players to treat you like a piece of rubbish, you will be accepted as a piece of rubbish. You're the boss, you're in charge, you've got to do it. You've got to be respected. How many times do you see the referee say, come here, calls the player across, wants to have a gentle, quiet word with the player, and the player decides, okay, I'm going to do up my shoelace, I'm going to pull up my socks, I'm going to listen to you for 30 seconds, I'm going to run away. Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 no. That's not respect. That's not respect. The player who bends over to do up pull up their socks, you just say, stand up when you're talking to me. Stand up when I'm talking to you. You have to insist on respect, just like your boss does, just like a teacher does in a classroom. Without respect, you've got nothing. Next thing, next thing we're going to talk about is a little thing called restoring the balance. Certainly, by the way, all these things are linked, right? And this could easily go up here in laws of the game. But essentially, restoring the balance means if something happens, a foul happens, maybe a foul and it should be a yellow card, the referee has to give back what was unfairly taken away. If a player does something that deserves a caution, to restore the balance, the referee has to issue the caution. If the referee doesn't continue to restore the balance, sooner or later, the players themselves will restore the balance. They'll take back what was taken away. Imagine if I asked you for $100, because you're a friend of mine. So I said, can you give me 100 bucks? You give me 100 bucks? And I said, thanks very much. Oh, oh by the way, look, here's, here's 50 back. Even though you're a friend, are you going to accept that deal? Of course not. You want to get your hundred dollars back. You're not going to be happy with just the 50. It's the same thing. If the referee doesn't restore the balance, the players will. So, communication, change of agreement, restore the balance, and the big one, respect. Respect. No respect, no control, nothing. They're probably the four biggest principles in player management. Let's have a look at some techniques. Okay. First one I want to look at is um, a physical technique. A physical technique. Because it links with the, the second point I want to. Okay. And it's the answer, no. Rather than up. How many times do we see a player fall down in a game and the referee goes, up, up, like this? What is it clearly saying to everyone? You're diving. It's saying you're cheating. The referee has elevated the argument from the player falling over to the referee implying that the player is cheating. All it takes is this. No. No. Right? And then... If the player comes back and says, what about that? You say, no, 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 no. Downgrade it. Downgrade the conversation. Don't escalate it. What you normally see in a game is the player says, oh, God, ref, come on, give us a chance. Don't you yell at me. The referee goes back. And so what we have is we have a head-on confrontation where all we had to do was say, no, 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 nothing. Nothing. And it's part of that communication chain. Right? part of that communication chain. We diminish the problem by saying no, rather than up. And if, the, if, you, if when you say, no, no, nothing there, the player comes again, you say, no, no, nothing, get go, play, play. And he comes again, you turn and you look at him, you say, I just said no. You work like a teacher, you work like an adult, you work like a father, or a leader controlling his people. I just said no. And now we've got to stop sign up. We've got to stop sign up. We're not coming along and saying, please, please, calm down, calm down, calm down. No. Stop. You're giving a direction rather than an appeal. 
stop the problem. Body language, diminish the problem. <coughs> Answer. The question. Answer the question. Now, the next one I want to do is one that Mark Shield used to use all the time. It's called the slap kiss. What amazed me was that I, I taught this to Mark and no one else seemed to notice he did it. But he did it in every game. And in fact, it was a large part of his player management. When you have to speak to a player, remember we said you've got to leave them in no doubt about the consequences of their behaviour. Right? So you would see Mark go, let's put the roadblocks in, okay? Let's put the roadblocks in. So there's the red card. There's the yellow card. Remember the roadblocks say these are things we do to try to stop the red card. Free kick and the public warning. Free kick and the quiet word. And then just the free kick. Uh, so this links in also with that idea of the um, restoring the balance, right? We get back, we give back what's taken away. Let's start down here. A foul, the player's unfairly taken the ball away from the other. Free kick, restore the balance. Yeah, there's the ball. You got the ball back. Ball, the balance is out of tilde, brings it back. Problem's finished. Player's starting to get a little bit too aggressive. You might give the free kick and say, hey, 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 hey. Just be careful. Just be careful. You're going in too hard. You're going in too aggressively. Just calm down. There's nothing big about it. You're just offering some friendly advice. Listen to the way I say, hey, 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 come on, careful, careful. Just too hard. Hear the tone of my voice, the sound of my voice. The next step up, the public warnings, where you pull the player out and you say to the player, one more time, one more time and you will be cautioned. It's your choice, but you will be cautioned. What did I do? One more time. You will be cautioned. I said the consequences. How did the voice say? How did the voice sound? It was stronger. I wasn't screaming and yelling, but it was stronger. It was more aggressive. I was getting the point through because we're trying to stop with this. One of these occurring. Now, let's have a look at the yellow card. Most of us just go yellow card and then away we go and the player says, Ugh. I've got a yellow card for that. I've got a yellow card for that. No, no, no. Yellow card's up. Look in the eye. One more time and you will leave the field. It's your choice, but you will leave. Then the referee should go. That way the referees put the emphasis on who was responsible for staying on the field back squarely on the player. It's not the referee's responsibility. It's the player's decision whether he stays on or goes off. So we have these steps here. How does the slap kiss work? It's an extension of these. Right? One more time and you'll be cautioned. It's your choice, but you will be cautioned. Come on. You don't want that. You don't need that. There's the slap first, then the kiss, the smile to say, I disliked what you did, but I don't dislike you as a person. We set up confrontations we don't need to have at times by glaring at players, by never smiling, by never enjoying the game. The slap kiss is dramatically effective. It's dramatically effective. And it should always be worth a try and can be used all the time before we think about using the captain. Using the captain's a desperation technique, really, in a big game. This is where the player's already been cautioned and is likely to be sent off. What you do is you call the captain across, similar to the public warning, and you say to the captain, you're the captain. You're responsible for your player's behaviour. Any more out of him, and he'll be sent off. You're the captain. You're responsible. You fix it. Let's go through it again. 
you allocate, you recognise the, the, the captain's position. You give him a responsibility. You allocate a task and then you repeat it. You're the captain. You're responsible for your player's behaviour. Any more out of him and he's going off. You're the captain. You're responsible. You fix it. Dramatically effective if the other things haven't worked. If the other things haven't worked, dramatically effective. So, <clears throat> no, not up. Answer the question. Slap kiss. The captain, we've looked at the roadblocks and how to extend them. Now, another little one is where you use time. This is allowing the pressure to seep out of the game. The card's gone up. One more time, you go out. Your choice, but you're going. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away five metres, six metres. Put the card back in your pocket. Take out your book. Stand there. Do your note taking. It can take a long time to write down three, trip, 20 second minute. Fold the book back up. It's part of theatre. Put it back in the pocket. Come back to where you want the free kick. Say, so, I want the ball here, guys. Okay, just here. Now, just wait for me. Let me get up the field. I'll give you a blow on the whistle when I'm ready, okay? All right? Then you go away. You've allowed tempers to cool down. That's called using time. It's a simple little technique. Let's go back to here. <clears throat> Once you get to this bit, the yellow card, what does the yellow card actually say? Last chance. Last chance. You cannot then go and say to the player, listen, you've already got a yellow card. I'm giving you another warning. That yellow card is their last warning. That's why I want you to pump it. It doesn't mean it's the last time you can talk to them because they might go in for another um, hardish tackle. There's nothing to stop you slipping down here in the chain and saying, hey, 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 you've already got the caution. That's a free kick. You've already got the caution. Watch how you go in. Your choice. Your choice. Watch how you go in. And go away. Go away. <clears throat> Dramatically effective. Dramatically effective. Dramatically effective. Dramatically effective. Dramatically effective. All of these techniques work. And they work for all the players and not just for some of them. They link in then with those other th two learning areas we've already talked about. We'll go back now and we'll take.